Let's start reading about who started the Labor Day celebration. And before I get started, I just want to wish everybody a happy Labor Day. What is Labor Day? It's more than an excuse for a three-day weekend and picnic. Let's find out what Labor Day is all about. Honoring labor. What is labor? It is work. People do work of all kinds, for themselves and for others. When people work for other people in exchange for money, so they can buy food for their families and pay the rent, they are called the workers, or the labor force. This work does not have to involve a shovel or a mop. Computer programmers and skilled medical personnel are also part of the labor force. The people who hire the workers also do work, but they tend to do work that is safer and cleaner and pays more. When we talk about the workers, we usually mean the people who are hired by others or by the government to do all the stuff that makes our civilization possible. From cleaning streets to repairing machines, from picking crops to mining for coal, from assembling trucks to taking care of children in preschool. May Day Events in the 19th century, as nations moved from most work being on farms to most work being in factories, new workers in factories often found they were being paid too little for too much work in dangerous conditions. Workers' associations and then unions began to be organized so that the conversation was no longer between the powerful boss a boss and a single unhappy worker, but between the boss and all the workers in the factory. The boss then had to consider what he would do if the workers went on strike and stopped working. Often it turned out to make sense. The boss then had to consider what he would do if the workers went on strike and stopped working. Often it turned out to make sense to increase wages a little to improve working conditions rather than having a factory sit idle for weeks or months during the strike. Workers wanted the whole community to know what was going on, so community pressure could help, could help convince the owner to negotiate a situation that would let everyone go back to work a little more happy. Union organizers who hoped for a large change in society so that owners would have less power and workers would have more, began to hold parades and rallies on May 1st each year. This was known as International Labor Day, and it is a huge event outside North America. May 1st was chosen to be a general strike in Chicago that started May 1st, 1886. The goal of the strike was to gain an eight-hour workday for most workers. At a time when owners wanted workers to be in the factory ten or more hours every day, and often a Saturday as well, there was some violence related to the strike, which led a policeman dying. Four labor leaders were arrested, tired, and executed, even though they had nothing to do with to do directly to the death of the policemen. Workers around the world set May 1st every year as a day to remember those who were executed, to celebrate what workers do, and to push for better working conditions. May Day has became, has became a, important to the Labor Day movement in the United States. Many owners and politicians saw the rising strength of the labor movement as a threat to America's capitalist system where many laws and traditions supported increasing capital, money, or, and other wealth over other issues like work, worker health, equal opportunity, or the environment. In May 1894, railway workers went on strike and trains could not run. This prevented raw materials from moving to factories and goods, from moving to factories to shop. Beyond this, there was a feeling that perhaps the workers, the whole system of powerful owners and struggling workers might change to a system where more people shared both wealth and power. As part of the resolution of the strike, Democratic President Grover Cleveland declared a national day 
to honor labor, but not May 1st. May 1st was seen as too much of the symbol of the power of the of unions. unions. Instead, the politicians settle on the first Monday in September as a National Labor Day, a new holiday, the rise of Labor Day. In Canada, the Tor Toronto Trades Assembly, a gathering of skilled workers, organized a demonstration to support the rights of workers in 1872. The demonstration called for the release of 24 newspaper workers who were put in jail going for going on strike in support of a shorter work day down to only nine hours. At this time in Canada, trade unions were illegal and going on strike was seen as a criminal act, but there was great public support for the parade and for the cause of workers. Canada's leaders realized they could not ignore the importance of workers to the economy. The ca Canadian government repealed all Canadian laws blocking trade unions, and the Can Canadian Labor Congress was founded a few years later. In the United States, September 1st and importance as a worker holiday in several states. Since 1882, some unions in New York and other states had held a celebration on the first Monday in September. This was partly inspired by the demonstrations in Canada. It was a welcome break from long days of work and a chance to enjoy one more good day of summer weather. In the late 1800s, people regularly worked 10 or more hours in factories, got, a little, n got, a, got little or no help if they were injured on the job, and had no sec job security or pension to help them when they could not work anymore. On September 5th, 1882, more than 10,000 workers left their jobs to march on City Hall in New York to press for in enforcement of fair labor laws and for, and for better working conditions. This was the first large-scale labor par parade in U.S. history. Many states passed laws recognizing the holiday for working people. Oregon was the first state in 1887. It was followed by 29 other states before the federal government took action. Finally, the U.S. Congress made Labor Day a national holiday in 1894, selecting the first Monday in September for the holiday rather than May 1st. It was an attempt to cause a split between unions that wanted radical change in the economic system and unions that did not. The government action favored the unions that were less militant and less anxious to change the system of the cap of capital and labor under which the United States operate. Who thought of it first? Nobody is quite sure who came up with the idea of Labor Day in the United States. It may have been Peter McGurry who helped found the American Federation of Labor. Others say it was another labor leader, Matthew McGarry, who first proposed a holiday for working people. Despite the similarity of their last names, the two men were not related. Labor Day Today Through most of the world, May 1st, or May Day, is the day to recognize the importance of labor to the world. In the United States, the first Monday in September takes focus. Since this holiday gives a three-day weekend at the end of summer and four before the start of the school year, for most families, it is a time to s for, some ho for some holiday activity rather than marching in support of workers' rights. Soon after the declaration of the official holiday, even the unions in New York City abandoned their annual parade on the first Monday in September. They felt it could not compete with the attractions of a holiday weekend. <coughs> but while it is fun to have a cookout, watch fireworks, or have fun in other ways on Labor Day, it is important not to forget how important working people are to the country. Here are some things to remember. In the 1950s, almost one-third of working Americans were in labor unions. That ratio has declined to about 12% now. 
but union labor is still a strong force making possible production in many industries. In the United States, there are about 160 million people in the workforce. Most of the rest of the population is retired, disabled, too young, under 16, to be eligible or in prison or unavailable for other reasons. <coughs> Finance trade manager with business crew. About 60% of workers are in blue collar jobs. Those are jobs that involve you in physical work that is often dirty and sometimes risky. A work area that is growing very quickly is personal care aides. These people help older and less able people, especially the elderly, to be safe, healthy, and active. Women face discrimination at in the workplace. One area is <coughs> how much they get paid. On average, a woman earns about 70% of what a man earns, even if both of them have the same qualifications and are doing similar work. Workers United. Working people get together. Working people to get to get. Working people get together to negotiate for fair wages. <coughs> For better working conditions and for other benefits, a lot of, of things we take for granted, like not working on the weekend, are a result of both efforts and labor unions. Learn more. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, have, I hope you have a nice Labor Day, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!